Hello and welcome to today's video. This video is going to be focusing on the Aversion Project, which occurred during Apartheid South Africa. So if you don't know about Apartheid, it was essentially a system of legislation in South Africa that upheld segregationist policies against non-white citizens. Although it's a complicated history, in a nutshell, essentially everybody who was not white was treated as a second-class citizen in the country. So under that context, in apartheid South Africa, there existed a dual policy on homosexuality in the South African military. This dual policy consisted of two major components, which prohibited permanent members of the armed forces from being homosexual, while permitting homosexuality amongst conscripts. In apartheid South Africa, all white men were required to serve a certain number of years in the military, whether they wanted to or not. The dual policy was adopted because officials believed that banning homosexuality from the military completely would give a specific group of individuals, young, white South African men, a convenient way to avoid serving in the military, because many did not want to serve in the military. However, with the toleration of homosexuality came forced therapy, such as compulsion shock therapy, castration, and other forms of therapy, which were said to significantly violate basic human rights. Now, the head of this program in the South African military was a man called Dr. Levin. And now, Dr. Levin genuinely treated disturbed patients, patients suffering from mental illnesses, but was also keen to take in other soldiers to, within quotations, cure. His focus was on homosexuals and drug users. And he encouraged commanding officers and chaplains to refer what he termed deviants for, again, quoted commas, treatment. Now, between 1971 and 1989, victims were submitted to chemical castration and electric shock treatment meant to cure them of their homosexuality. This trend was supported by psychiatrists and psychologists with the idea that homosexuals suffered from a mental illness. Now, this was published in the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic Statistic Manual of Mental Disorders, the DSM, which is still used today, but thankfully they have updated it somewhat. Conscripts with this proclaimed mental illness were treated significantly different than other members of the military. They were not given military leadership positions and they were not entrusted with sensitive information. During the course of the shock therapy treatment, electrodes were strapped to the upper arm with wires and then run through a dial calibrated from 1 to 10 with varying current. Homosexual soldiers were shown black and white pictures of a naked man and were encouraged to fantasize, at which point the person in charge would administer a shock if the soldier showed any form of sexual response, and voltage was increased throughout the treatment, the soldiers continued to exhibit sexual responses. So essentially, they're just having operational conditioning in order to be averse from the stimuli that they've been shown. However, the conversion therapy was noticeably failing, and staff decided to come up with an alternative. As a result, whenever treatments would not work, they put patients through sex change operations, without their consent most of the time. This included being put through surgery and being given a new identity. After this, patients would then be discharged from the military and advised to cut themselves off from all friends and family. Up to 900 homosexuals, mostly 16 to 24 year olds who had been drafted, had surgical procedures to alter their genitals and given birth certificates to fit their modified anatomy. The surgery was done in military hospitals and a high rate of patients died during the surgery. Additionally, the reassignments were often incomplete, leaving patients with halfway finished procedures. After being discharged, there were no follow-up appointments to finish the surgeries or check on their progress mentally and physically. In order to stay on track with their gender reassignment, patients needed an extensive supply of hormones, but they typically lacked the means to pay for these hormones to maintain their new identities. While Levin was the primary leader of the Aversion Project, he was one of 24 other doctors that were warned by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which occurred after apartheid ended, that what they were doing was a violation of human rights and that they risked being labeled as perpetrators of human rights abusers. 
Dr. Levin claimed that all patients were volunteers, although in the early 2000s and late 90s, many of these so-called volunteers came forward and said that they had not been volunteers at all and that they were forced to undergo the therapy. Since then, Levin has been accused of many more instances of medical foul practice, targeting many other men, not only those who identified as homosexual. Because of these additional charges, not for the original ones, Dr. Levin was sentenced in 2014, April 23rd, to a five-year prison sentence, which, at the time of making this video, has officially ended. And that's a, and that's a brief history on the Aversion Project, and hopefully nothing like it will happen again. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching and goodbye.